Hello from the European Parliament in Brussels. It's been a busy six months uh, and like many of you here in the European Parliament, we have continued to adapt to remote working and fortunately our work continued uninterrupted. Some of you may know that I experienced both COVID and long COVID and was thrilled to have received my vaccine doses here in the Parliament. And it is brilliant to hear how well the vaccination programmes is going across the European Union and of the huge uptake across the constituency. On behalf of Midlands Northwest constituency, I've been working very hard on a number of key issues over the past number of months. On the Employment and Social Affairs Committee, I'm currently working on a file to implement better pay transparency measures and close the 14% pay gap. We desperately need to review how the gender pay gap is preventing women from getting on the career ladder or preventing them from returning to jobs because they face a distinct possibility that they will be paid less than their male counterparts. On the Civil Liberties and Justice and Home Affairs Committee, I'm working on a file combating gender-based cyber violence. The file will examine the legislative and non-legislative actions that the European Union institutions can take to consider and combat cyber violence as a form of gender-based violence. Very important. There is a desperate need for legal definitions of violence against women to include online abuse and hatred, as is the case under the Istanbul Convention. I recently hosted a round table with national organisations, including Women's Aid, Cyber Safe Kids, Irish Congress of Trade Unions, Young Fine Gael and Fine Gael Women's Network as part of that work because it's imperative to ensure that the issues at grassroots and national level will be incorporated into my work at EU level here in the Parliament. With no other Irish MEP currently on the Culture and Education Committee, I made a special application to join as a full member. The cultural sector in Ireland needs somebody to represent them in Europe, supporting the recovery of the culture and creative sectors as a priority, as it's strengthening social security for artists, authors and other workers in the industries. This committee also deals with education, another priority of mine, and one I already work on in the Employment and Social Affairs Committee. Digital upskilling and equal access to education is key for people of all ages across our region. I'm continuing my work to develop and deliver a, a European Year of Good Mental Health to raise awareness of citizens' mental health. As shared with you on a number of occasions, mental health is one of the main priorities in my work as your MEP. I work to incorporate mental health into all facets of my work and I'm co-chair of both the Parliament interest groups uh, dealing with mental health, the Mental Health Alliance and the Coalition for Mental Health and Wellbeing, two very, very important groups. Finally, let me remind you all of the Conference on the Future of Europe, which was launched here in May. The conference is an initiative to give citizens a greater role in shaping the union's future policies and ambitions. Improving its resilience is key. It is important for people to get involved in this conference so they can voice their opinions. And I encourage you all to get involved and make your voice heard on issues you feel are important. Let me take this moment to say I wish you, your family and friends a lovely summer and I look forward to meeting you in person very soon. Stay safe and well.